Hello and welcome to this first podcast by the European Alliance for Apprenticeships on the subject Apprenticeships, an Effective Pathway to Career Success for the Youth. My name is Andrew McCoshan. I'm an expert with the European Commission's Apprenticeship Support Service and I'm delighted to be joined by Commissioner Nicola Schmidt, who in a moment will share some important insights on this topic. But before diving into our discussion, I'm delighted to give the floor to the host of our podcast series, Anna Carrero, to introduce our topic. Anna is Deputy Head of Unit at the European Commission's Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion. Anna, over to you. Thank you, Andrew, and welcome everyone to the very first episode of the European Alliance for Apprenticeships podcast series. But let me first remind you what's the Alliance all about. First of all, it is a platform for sharing experiences and learning about apprenticeships. It unites public authorities and key stakeholders like businesses, vet providers, social partners, all with a shared commitment to apprenticeships. It is also a community where to find partners, develop new ideas or initiatives, and access the latest news and tools on apprenticeships. But coming back to our podcast series, the plan is to publish four episodes during 2022 and seize the opportunity to disseminate knowledge related to the objectives of the Alliance, meaning how to strengthen quality, increase the supply, improve the image of apprenticeships or promote the mobility of apprentices. With this in mind, the podcast series will also feature inspiring practices from, from across Europe on these relevant topics. In today's episode, Commissioner Nicola Schmidt will join us to set the scene and talk about the role of apprenticeships in tackling youth unemployment, a particularly important subject in the wider context of the European Year of Youth and the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Today's episode will also take a closer look at the main support actions taken by the European Commission and the roles that different stakeholders can play in making sure apprenticeships unleash their full potential. With many thanks to the Commissioner for his time to engage in this highly topical discussion, I will pass the floor back to you, Andrew, to get the conversation started. Thank you, Anna. Clearly, we are dealing with some very timely and hot topics here, and I'm delighted that the Commissioner's been able to join us for this podcast. Commissioner, this will be a big year for young people in Europe, with 2022 being designated European Year of Youth. Could you tell us what the intention is behind this designation? And what do you hope to achieve in your role as Commissioner for Jobs and Social Rights? Well, you're right. Uh, this will be a, a very important year for, for young people in Europe. And the President of the Commission decided to, to uh, proclaim this year the year of the European youth uh, for good reasons. Because we know that young people are suffering, have suffered a lot from this pandemic. Uh, we are coming out of a, we came out of a crisis. We started to see uh, unemployed youth unemployment uh, decreasing, and then a new crisis, a very special crisis, started. Not just the crisis uh, uh, with the economic dimension, but the crisis also which affects uh, social life, and especially affects uh, uh, young people in their professional, educational, but also social uh, social life. So I think uh, now uh, we have to deliver because it's not just a, a nice uh, proclamation. It's uh, also an obligation to deliver on uh, policies, on measures uh, that help uh, young people uh, to overcome this crisis and uh, to find uh, their ways. Yeah, you've highlighted there a wide range of the sort of social and economic challenges that young people are facing. And clearly youth employment is a key concern, especially in the wake of COVID-19. Could you shed some light on how the EU is supporting member states to tackle the issue? Well, when we look at the uh, unemployment figures, which uh, surged uh, when the, the crisis uh, started and then declined relatively rapidly, thanks also to a, a number of measures which were supported by the Commission, like the SURE program. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, youth unemployment stayed at a higher level and is more than double the normal unemployment figures. 
Uh, and therefore, the Commission, uh, even at the beginning of this crisis, we launched a program called uh, Youth Employment Support because we, uh, we became aware that uh, especially young people with more precarious uh, jobs uh, and those who are looking for jobs, who want uh, who wants to enter the labor market, uh, were in danger. So uh, asking member states... Uh, to support, to develop special support schemes uh, for young people. And here, apprenticeships uh, are a very important element of, uh, because also when uh, companies have to close, when uh, we are on remote work for many companies, well, it becomes uh, sometimes more difficult to take uh, uh, new apprentices. And uh, that was also one aspect to support apprenticeships. And we saw that in some countries, uh, the number of apprentices, despite of these difficulties, increased even very strongly. In others, it decreased. So I think uh, maintaining the level of apprenticeships, maintaining young people in apprenticeships, uh, despite of the difficulties, was one of our major aim uh, in order to provide the skills, but also the stability for young people and the opportunity for those looking for, uh, for professional uh, possibilities through apprenticeships. It's very heartening to hear that the in some countries the the apprenticeship numbers went up because in fact, um, as you've mentioned, in some places it went down and actually generally we have a picture where um, it's been a very difficult time for apprenticeships and for apprentices uh, and apprenticeships are of course generally considered to be an effective tool in helping young people make this transition from school to work. Um, I'm sure our audience would be very interested if you could shed some more light on how uh, the pandemic has been affecting apprentices. Well, the pandemic has affected apprentices uh, by the fact that uh, some sectors, especially those the most affected by the pandemic, uh, like uh, hospitality, like tourism, uh, like other service sectors, which uh, have been uh, really hit hard by by the pandemic because we have uh, we had to close down uh, for a certain period, and this meant for especially for young people, for apprentices, and for those uh, being in these sectors, either to lose their jobs or not to get the full benefit of uh, the whole. Uh, uh, skilling uh, possibilities in their apprenticeships. So uh, we uh, we encouraged, obviously, the companies and also member states uh, to try to mitigate as much as possible these uh, impacts uh, by supporting companies, especially when we are talking about apprentice, uh, apprenticeships. Very often we are talking about SMEs, smaller and medium-sized companies. Uh, and when we are in the service sector, they, they, they suffered a lot. Take uh, restaurants, take hospitality, they suffered a lot. And they also offer a lot of uh, uh, apprenticeships in this particular uh, profession. So how to support uh, these companies to maintain the number uh, of apprentices and uh, and and give also new apprentices the possibility to uh, to enter into apprenticeships because uh, if uh, you are not finding a, a an apprenticeship well you are just losing a year in your life you you're losing opportunities to be skilled for the profession you have chosen so i think this is something which uh, we tried to keep up and to maintain and i think globally speaking Despite the fact that it decreased in some countries, it decreased in some sectors, globally we managed to maintain uh, the level of apprenticeships uh, all over Europe. And, and of course within that, the, um, the green and digital transitions are, are, are really important too, um, I think. And the, um, uh, they form an, will form an important part of um, the coming job creation and indeed probably of the commitments uh, being made under the renewed European Alliance for Apprenticeships. Um, and companies have, a, of course, a central role in delivering on these sorts of commitments. And you've already hinted at some of the issues uh, companies have faced during the pandemic, particularly SMEs. Uh, and sometimes companies need convincing um, of, of the importance of investing in this type of training because um, they can have uh, difficulties uh, overcoming some of their internal constraints. And I'm wondering what the Commission can do in this respect and, and perhaps also um, what social the role social partners can play 
uh, in tackling youth unemployment and creating opportunities for apprenticeships? Certainly. Uh, well, I said it already. When when what part of your staff and sometimes uh, big parts of your staff uh, uh, are on on short time uh, work. Uh, well, the company is not very motivated in taking uh, new people in and especially also apprentices in. So this was one of the major constraints. But now I think we are getting out of this situation, hopefully, <laughs> that uh, this, uh, this is uh, changing. So now we have, uh, we, are, uh, we have a new start, and especially also for apprenticeships. Now, you have mentioned uh, uh, the greening of uh, our economies. And I think this is a, 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 a huge new opportunity, especially for apprenticeships. There are a lot of new, uh, new professions, or at least also changing professions, very much related to the greening of our economies and giving really interesting opportunities for young people, uh, for new skills in, in the green economy. Uh, a lot of sectors, a lot of activities uh, uh, in the energy sector, for instance, uh, when, you're taking, uh, when you take uh, heating systems, for instance, well, uh, this is uh, in a very rapid and, and broad change where you see, by the way, that green technologies and digital technologies converge. And uh, these are opportunities for young people to find new jobs, good jobs, stable jobs, uh, jobs with a, a, a high level of skills. Uh, that's what we are aiming at, uh, apprenticeships leading to quality jobs. And I think this is uh, the message we have to give to young people. And we have to support, obviously, member states that was done is uh, is done also in the in the context of the uh, recovery and resilience fund to invest in these new areas to invest also in this type of uh, education and i see that in a certain number of uh, member states where finally apprentice uh, this uh, vocational training was not so developed are investing a lot now in vocational training take Italy, take Spain, they are really doing, take France, they are doing a lot of efforts to develop vocational training, uh, multiply apprenticeships, increasing the quality of apprenticeships. This is the right way to do, and they are financing it partly on the recovery and in the, in the framework of their recovery and resilience uh, plans. And I, th I think it's true that that um, social partners, of course, have been very important in in kind of developing this this framework within which uh, apprenticeships can grow and develop uh, within countries that uh, that may not have had very high levels of apprenticeships before. Maybe you could uh, share your views on on the, the important roles that social partners can play uh, in this arena. Well, you know that in those countries where apprenticeship is very strongly and very firmly established, Germany, Austria, some Nordic countries, social partners are playing a very important role in organizing uh, apprenticeships. It's, it's part of the social dialogue. It's part of the social partnership also to uh, foster, to, uh, to sustain, to support uh, uh, the apprenticeship system. And this is also a lesson for uh, all those countries who are now about to, to support the development of their own system, that social partners have to be involved in that. Uh, this is part of the culture of companies. Uh, I visited uh, some time ago a lot of companies in my own country, but also in, uh, in Germany, in Austria. And there you see how social partners are cooperating in uh, steadily improving the standards of apprenticeships as part of their social dialogue in the companies. It's not just at the, uh, at the global level, national level. It's in the companies where a lot of, uh, those, uh, um, of this dialogue is happening. And I think this is a very good example because uh, it, it gets up from the bottom. It uh, uh, takes the advantage of uh, the knowledge of people who know what is uh, needed, especially also the entrepreneurs, the companies themselves, but also social partners to bring in young people and to motivate them and to really integrate them into, uh, into the company. So I think social partnership as a whole 
uh, this culture also at the level of companies is, is, is really of essence for a very successful apprenticeship uh, system for a very successful vocational uh, training system. You've highlighted uh, very clearly there the role that, uh, uh, that member states have in, in developing apprenticeships. But of course, there's also um, this supportive role that the European Union provides through the European Alliance for Apprenticeships um, and also its European uh, the quality framework um, for related to apprenticeships. Um, maybe you could shed some light on the importance of that and those sort of activities that are taking place at uh, at European level uh, to support apprenticeships. It's not, I guess, just about uh, funding opportunities, but also about also about non-financial support uh, that can be provided. Yeah. Well, first, uh, we uh, under the German presidency, a lot was done for uh, the promotion of apprenticeships and vocational training. There was. Uh, uh, a recommendation adopted by member states. Uh, there was a declaration uh, which replaced previous declarations uh, really to uh, underline the commitment of member states for promoting uh, apprenticeships, but also the commitment of the commission to support this, uh, this development. So this is something uh, which is organized at European level, that we have this exchange of good practices that finally now, when I remember I attended a, a ministerial meeting and the 27 member states expressed their firm intention uh, either to continue, to adapt, to strengthen apprenticeships or really to develop apprenticeships. There is a consensus now at European level that apprenticeships are key for the future development for employment, but also for the economic development, uh, for developing skills, not just uh, uh, also in the context of li lifelong learning. So here the European Union, through the alliance, but also through uh, other, the quality framework, which is very important because at the end, it's also about the quality of apprenticeships. Uh, uh, it's not just talking about apprenticeships, but it's the fact that uh, the result has to be a quality uh, a high, uh, of high quality. So uh, putting together standards, putting together the ways how I can improve the quality of, uh, of this, uh, uh, of this um, skilling process, uh, I think is, is very important. And here a lot can be learned uh, from each other. And uh, this is what the commission is, is pushing. And I think in that sense, the alliance is, is, is a great success because we noticed also that a lot of new uh, uh, apprenticeships have been declared. And I, I think here the, the alliance is a, a driving force um, to, uh, to promote, uh, promote European-wide uh, the uh, the apprenticeship uh, system all over. Yeah, it's been it's been good news, isn't it, in terms of the uh, commitments uh, that the European Alliance has has kind of received from 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 companies and so on and so forth. And um, it's also um, really positive that the that at European level we see a sort of range of supports for uh, for people, kind of a, from policy down to sort of practice level. Um, we see that through the Apprenticeship Support Service, for example. And also, um, I think it's important to emphasise that uh, it's, not, it's not just about the funding opportunities, but also about the sort of non-financial support, things like guidelines and, and toolkits. Maybe you could um, shed some light on the importance of those, those sort of supports to people, um, not just at European level, but within countries as well. Well, you you know that uh, we uh, we are about to uh, to launch a reinforced European apprenticeship network in Barcelona, uh, which is very interesting. Also, in in order really to uh, to show that apprenticeship is part of also of the European uh, 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 the, the year of European youth. So it it is really focused also on 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 uh, on apprenticeships, and therefore this uh, this initiative is is of, uh, is is very important. Uh, now uh, you 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 refer to it. We have new partners in the alliance. We have a lot of uh, I think about one hundred and sixty thousand um, uh, new uh, uh, apprenticeship places were were declared. We have now, with the economy, with the recovery, now in some countries, uh, places that are not occupied. We are in some areas, in some sectors, uh, 
uh, also at the level of apprenticeships, we are facing shortages. And uh, this is something which is also has to be dealt with. Uh, we had a very interesting meeting uh, last week in Paris on mobility of apprentices. I think this is also a very key element. We have to uh, su support uh, uh, apprenticeship mobility. I, 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 I attended a, um, a broadcast with uh, young people and uh, they, they just uh, uh, talked about their experience for mobility. Unfortunately, apprentices, a very few, a very low number of apprentices have this opportunity for mobility. And they showed and, 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 and talked about their experience, very positive. Uh, somebody going from south of France to Hamburg, uh, especially in this uh, heating business, learning there, working in a German company and then going back to France with this uh, very solid experience. So this is something also we have very much to promote uh, in, uh, in the uh, framework of uh, uh, a stronger mobility for apprenticeships. Yeah, this is such absolutely key, isn't it, that, that uh, apprentices can benefit from... Um, Erasmus, the, yeah, from the yeah can benefit from the Erasmus Plus program and so on, and and reap all those um, benefits in terms of skills development that we've seen uh, for such a long time with higher education students. And of course, mobility uh, within Europe depends a lot on on uh, EU funded projects. Um, maybe uh, finally, you could give us some examples of of uh, where EU funded projects have uh, been used to boost apprenticeships. Um, uh, across the, across the EU. Yes, uh, I, I I can give a a, a certain number of uh, of uh, um, programs uh, which were developed very successfully, especially in countries which uh, perhaps uh, were not so very much focused on the apprenticeships, like Greece. Uh, here we uh, supported 11,000 11, young apprentices uh, uh, in, in Greece uh, who enrolled in the national apprenticeship uh, programs. I think this is a very good start also. And I, I was in Greece and I talked to the ministers there and they really are very much uh, uh, decided uh, to uh, to promote the apprenticeship in the in the Greek system, and especially Greece is a country with a very high, with one of the highest uh, youth unemployment, and so uh, they have understood that uh, vocational training might be a, a very good uh, way to reduce rapidly uh, youth unemployment and to 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 organize this path from uh, school education to uh, to the uh, to the labor market but we also have uh, uh, important projects in Romania where also um, uh, especially in in industry uh, a lot of apprent apprentices could uh, enter and especially in, in new uh, sectors uh, we talked about the green but also about the digital aspect and we all know that now uh, industry is more and more becoming uh, industry uh, 4.0, the digitalization of industry, and here uh, also apprenticeships have to adapt to these uh, new challenges. And I, uh, I mentioned France. France is certainly a, a success story in, in terms of promoting apprenticeships. Despite of the crisis, the French have increased dramatically the number of apprentices. And this shows it's possible. Uh, if you put the money, if you put the infrastructure, if you motivate the companies, you can have uh, this increase in the apprenticeships. Now, certainly it's about quality. It's about motivating young people. It's about showing that apprentice uh, vocational training is equivalent. It's not a second rank uh, way of uh, being skilled or uh, it opens a lot of good opportunities, professional opportunities. So this is uh, what we are very much supporting and uh, I think uh, uh, we are on the, on the right track uh, in, in, in this respect. Thank you, Commissioner. I think that's a very positive note on which to end the podcast. Uh, I think we can see from what you said that there's much that can be done across Europe to use apprenticeships to help tackle not the, just the challenges that young people face, but also to open up new opportunities for them, uh, particularly in relation to the uh, green and digital transitions. Clearly, also, there's a lot of exciting European initiatives going on already or on the horizon. And it's really important that we get things right for young people because clearly they are uh, the future of Europe. As far as our listeners and watchers are concerned, 
I would like to encourage you to please share the episode with your colleagues and also share your views on the discussions on social media. And you can use the established hashtag, hashtag EU. I'm also pleased to draw your attention to the fact that the episode's available on YouTube as AFA Vodcast, starting with a V, and on Spotify and SoundCloud as AFA Podcast, starting with a P. Finally, we would encourage you to tune in for the next episodes, uh, where we would dive into a range of topics, such as the image and attractiveness of apprenticeships, uh, mobility of apprentices, and quality and effectiveness. In the meantime, stay safe, and many thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.